system that we're using, there's actually there's a three-step process. The first is we've got a electrical conductivity meter. It's a system behind an ATV with a high-resolution GPS. And we go back and forth in the field every 45 feet transect to collect electromagnetic uh, readings. Uh, and we're, we're collecting both uh, topsoil and subsoil in our uh, a little, little better than a meter. And yeah. <clears throat> so that's the first process. Then we take that data and run it through a software, and it determines where we should be probing the field for uh, <clears throat> both our soil core and also this um, uh, soil probe that has four sensors on it. Uh, one is a compaction sensor, the other is a moisture sensor, the other is a conductivity sensor, and then, or, and then the, the fourth one is a friction uh, sleeve where it's actually determining the, uh, the sand silk clay content. So we go up and the software tells us where we should be taking these probes and then we probe down, collecting data down to four feet at each of the sites. Okay. And then we process that and determine um, the different, in fact there's 32 different attributes of the soil that we're looking at. So we're looking at not only the physical, but the chemical attributes of the soil. So in this case here, this is the electromagnetic uh, EC. And it says vertical, but actually, we're going to be using the physical surface uh, electromagnetic. And I overlay the soil survey on this particular field. You've got, you know, we've got some heavy soils. So you can see our client soils early there, and uh, we got some lighter soils, like Oran, Oran soil, 471, and then we've got some massive Oran soils there, and then that light yellow area is an um, Ostlander soil, which is a uh, sandier soil, and, and it could have a uh, sand subsoil. So this, this is what the surface EC map looks like. <clears throat> and then we also look at the subsurface. Right, so it's down below seven inches, eight inches. And you can see here that the, <clears throat> the purple readings or low readings, that's corresponding to that Ostrander soil, but it also extends up into the massive soil too. So it's obvious that we've got some sandier subsoils in that particular area. Um, this particular farmer, when you look at some of the yield maps, it was corresponding with basically the soil surface. That's fairly accurate, except that one single one of these massive soils should not have a sandy subsoil. Okay, so again, it's telling us that maybe the soil survey was not as accurate as it could be. It's showing it that it's much like that uh, Austrian area. However, what's interesting is when you look at like this Clyde here, there's some conclusions in that Clyde that uh, are different. All right, so for example, up there is the purple spot. And as you heard me talk about before, in the soil survey, if you read it carefully, we admit that one, uh, it's very designed for precision agriculture. Number two, that soil mapping unit that you see here, the, the 471A, the, the best we can say about that is it's about 60% pure. There's 40% other soils in there, we say, are there inclusions? Um, they were too small to map out. Uh, our resolution when we were mapping uh, soil survey was two acres. So anything less than two acres, you couldn't map it out on the soil. But again, that map we had was a four inch square mile. It's pretty small. Now, if they had like a you know, 12 inch by 12 inch square mile, we'd have a lot you know, uh, more surface of wood and you know, better resolution. But at that time, that's what we were looking at. So we're saying that, yeah, 471, 60% of it 
to be around. Uh -huh. It is around. But we've got some other soils in here, right? Uh, over here, Greenland soil, right? Uh, we've got some stuff that's probably more like a slime or foreign soil in that region. Like I said, up there in mean, Clyde, we've got something that's totally not Clyde. So when we look at our yield maps and try to make sense out of it, you gotta consider that it's hard sometimes to say, well yeah, why is this Greenland not acting like it should be in the Greenland? Jerry, we gotta have some classic case there where it's up there in that northeast corner, it's not <coughs> not Greenland. So it's probably so other soil. So this is what we're able to pick up with our electronic activity map. Then, when we look at some of the attributes, this, uh, this is the root zone saturated hydraulic conductivity. So what that means is, if you look at the soil after a good heavy rain and all the, the gravitational water has kind of uh, you know, flowed out of the soil, what's left is um, fuel capacity. And at that point, how much more water can that soil take? And this is what the saturated hydraulic conductivity is. So basically, uh, you know, when you, when you see some higher numbers, um, you know, the lighter soil area, well, no, excuse me, the lighter areas are your areas of low permeability, right? So it's, it's slow water movement in the soil profile. The darker green areas are your higher, so it corresponds to your sandy subsoil. Yeah. 394 up there, and then up there in that uh, basket. But you can see, even within soil mapping here, you've got quite a bit of variability. You've got areas that are, you know, very slow. You've got other areas that are quite a bit faster, right? Just within that soil mapping unit. So that's another case of what we're finding out here with this uh, more detailed <coughs> survey is the inclusions that we admittedly had on the civil survey, but did not have the tools to really map that out. Um, when we look at compaction, <coughs> and a lot of times, this kind of explains some of our anomalies we see in our yield maps. But compacted areas, this is a surface compaction. So what it's saying here is within the Clyde soil, particular <clears throat> example, anytime we get above about 350 PSI, it starts impeding the root growth, the root development. But we've got a Clyde soil that has a surface issue up there. Up there in that uh, in this uh, bowl, another uh, area, that red area, okay? And so you can see that within, you know, this uh, map here, there's, there's some compaction issues. Now, is that from previous operational tillage? Um, you know, we got to try to figure that out. But we can want to take care of compaction, you know, with, with uh, tillage. In this case here, it's probably down to about 12, 0 to 12 inches. The problem here is this particular farm is a no so uh, we have to look at some other issues on how to deal with that. <clears throat> but what is also interesting is to look at the subsoil compaction areas. And up there in that um, <coughs> ostrander soil, you can see that there's some subsoil issues there, and that's the deeper compaction issues that typically are more difficult to remove uh, because sometimes they are 12 inches to 24 inches or deeper, right? And so you can see that inherently this particular soil here is compacted uh, and we're not sure what we're going to do that. But that helps us at the same time to see the yield maps. When we look at depth to root restriction, so this is a kind of a combination of using the, the 
uh, saturated hand brush conductivity to the compaction zones in the soils and they develop this composite layer too. <coughs> what they're shown here is these deep brown or dark brown areas here. And that material area is showing that we've got a soil uh, root restriction of 9 to 14 inches. You know, so it's down about 14 inches, it's, it's impeding some, some root growth to up there. You know, so that, again, is showing that there's some issues um, you know, with this particular field. Um, and that could explain some of the wetness issues, or also, you know, plant growth where you have roots that are not getting down into the subsoil, or they're having a harder time. <coughs> That's an effect, you know, the, the plant growth overall. Another map that we're looking into, okay, this is uh, again looking at some of the, uh, the physical properties. So this is the surface sand. And uh, you can see that uh, we've got, uh, you know, we've got some areas, again, this is explaining some of the, the anomalies that we're seeing within the soil mapping. We've got quite a variation there in uh, surface uh, sand. When you look at the subsurface sand, uh, again, you're seeing, well, we've got a we know that over there, you know, that's, that's a sandier subsoil, that particular soil. But look over here, we've got some sand here from the Clyde soil that typically should not have a higher sand content. It should be a clay loam. Right? So, uh, <coughs> again, this is stuff that we're picking up with this uh, higher resolution clay surface. Again, we're showing that. Uh, you know, the variation here, the lighter color is a uh, uh, you know, lower content of clay and darker, higher content of clay. Looking at the subsurface clay content, and it's pretty much marrying up with, uh, with the soil um, delineations, except, you know, in that southern half there where it's from the clay. Well, there's some sand deposits you know, in that particular quiet uh, mapping here. Now this is an interesting thing. When we started looking at some of the chemical properties of soils, um, and this may explain, we've got some fields, I know in uh, Northeast Iowa, where we have to line for years and years and years. We've got other fields that we have to line you know, maybe four years, five years. I've got some fields that we have aligned in 10, 15 years. So this is the sub, this is the surface pH, right? So it's zero to seven inches. Shows that, you know, that's a variability out there. Uh, you know, we got some neutral pHs, you know, um, seven to seven five pHs so in that area. And we've got some acid soils you know, in the darker grounds. Uh, you can typically see that, you know, just from the farming practices. Not much of an issue. Uh, we can learn that, you know, develop a prescription map and deal with that. However, when we look at the subsurface, and this could explain some of the issues that we're seeing, uh, <coughs> this particular farm here, if you look at all the different soils here, we've got some subsoils that are really neutral. I mean, look at that. Clyde there, uh, Oren, Sly, this is supposed to be an acid subsoil, 07 sly soil. Uh, same with the bass up there. And look at the variability that you have. So, um, again, this is just uh, illustrating the variability that we see out there uh, using this uh, technology. Uh, and it could help explain you know, some of the things that we're seeing. Not only with our plant growth, but also the fact that uh, we don't have to line or even fertilize uh, some soils as much. And why? In some soils, now this next slide I'll show you, um, we've actually got soils that have medium to high phosphorus and potash levels in the subsoil. Okay. And, uh, and that, you know, that could explain 
why maybe if we have some low test levels in our surface, but we don't see any yield response to, to uh, added fertilizer, it's because there's that subsoil contribution. 